Ah, uh, Pet is so toxic. <laughs> Bro, I think Cap sucks. Should I be on the record saying that? <laughs> <laughs> They're doing their best. I, th I think that- This is Sparta! Well, I'm Anna. I'm a sophomore in the college studying political science with anthropology, anthropology and Korean minor. So my name is Vin. I'm from Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. I'm currently a junior in the Wharton School studying um, finance and business analytics with a uh, minor in consumer psychology. Um, my name is Alex. I'm a senior in computer science and um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Erin Brown, and I'm a senior at the University of Pennsylvania studying psychology. Yeah, for sure. Um, yes. Yes, I have. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I think a big part of my experience probably was being figly. At Penn, um, neither of my parents completed college, so I didn't really come in knowing anything about like what to expect. So I didn't like do any extracurriculars or like party often because I was so focused on trying to be integrated into college life. So I ended up becoming very isolated from other people. One thing that I had to deal with when I came to college coming from home, living with my mom, is that it was my responsibility to figure out like when I was eating. If you didn't have the motivation to eat, then that just meant you were like shoveling food in your mouth and you know you need the nutrients, but you're just like dead. Specifically during um, the end of sophomore year and beginning of junior year, I feel like the like the workload really ramped up and um, it doesn't help like, you know, like everybody around you is, I guess, brought up in a professional community already, uh, environment already, so, I wasn't completely ready for it, to be honest, when I first uh, moved here. It wasn't like anything at home, um, so it took a lot of time to just sort of um, just reassure myself, like, you're here and you're not an imposter, you know, everybody's getting jobs, but like, you know, you gotta take your time before, you know, everything works out. Well, like, a lot of people at Penn are very rich, <laughs> coming from, like, the polar opposite, like, socioeconomic background as that. I started to also, like, wonder if not being exposed to as many opportunities for like college prep or like extracurriculars or even just like life experiences like cultural capital like skiing or like golfing or like stuff that rich people do like it made me less worthy of being here and less worthy of making friends or like being seen as like valued in relationships you know everybody at that point is sort of settled, their future is kind of like, um, you know, oh, I have a job here and there. It may be small, like when you don't have a job, it's like it, it comes up. Mm -hmm. um, but I feel like if you keep getting reminded that you're not, you don't have a job, you're not good enough, it, it can get a little, you know, mentally straining on, yeah, on you and then it builds up over time. Right. Yeah. It was during COVID. Aside from my personal um, stress, I had to do all the classworks. During COVID, it was kind of difficult managing the classwork because I was in Korea and we had this uh, time difference. I couldn't go to office hours. The lectures were all recorded and for the sociology classes, I had to stay up till like three or four or else I couldn't take it. I started college studying engineering and that was a very stressful major that my coursework was very stressful so it was a lot of just like going days on end without really experiencing joy. Computer science is kind of known to be like a difficult major. We have pretty strict rules on our late days, our um, extensions. When I was struggling with my class I did reach out to a TA and like ask for a bit more of a, uh, late days and because of course, policies, I couldn't get it. You know, people that choose finance, you choose it because you're very career oriented. You want to make, you know, a lot of money later in life. So you're a very driven person. If you're not brought up in that community, which you know, kind of like I was thrown into it, I feel very pressured to meet the standards that everybody else set. I do feel like it's the main contribution to sort of like how I feel. There was also stuff going on at home for me. The year that I graduated high school, my parents got divorced. I wasn't there to be a buffer for them anymore. So things kind of got 
tense between them. Yeah, both my sisters were kind of going through a rough time too, but you know, I was so busy with coursework that it's difficult to prioritize negative emotions. I think the class I was taking back then was CIS 160 and that is one of the more challenging, not like challenging, it's, the workload is very heavy. Yeah, it was kind of difficult to balance that and like stress and being away from school and not being able to access office hours that well, um, not being able to go to live lectures. Independent of me, I know a lot of people uh, would pick the major just because it's like well known and everything mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. Even though they admit to themselves that they're not doing well, but they gotta do it anyways because that's what everybody does here. And I feel like that's why a lot of people here have like a second concentration. So yeah, we have to do finance, but my true interest is actually in my second concentration. Typically we have like four to five late days depending on the course. You can use it for whatever homeworks except for the homeworks that are during like exam week. Often I have an I have I had a homework due on Monday when Wednesday was the midterm and we could not use late days because they had to um, get the answers out before the midterm. So what happens when you use up your late days? Ah uh, yeah, that's um yeah, either they take like I don't know like 20-50% off of the homework or you cannot like submit it. If you're talking about the introductory computer science courses, they are we weekly or two per week. It might be very unique to Wharton in a sense that like literally everybody here does finance, right? It's hard to say because it's sort of confounding. People go here because they want to study finance, mm -hmm. partly as well. Mm -hmm. I don't think my friends from like other school, you know, um, true like liberal arts school, feels the same way I do here. Penn, I feel like is very like business and STEM based, like the humanities aren't given a lot of attention, you know? So then like all of my friends were like STEM majors and started to wonder if like because I'm not as good at STEM, like I wasn't worthy of like getting like attention or support or like praise or love. And so I spent like so long trying to convince myself like, oh no, I'm the like, greatest STEM. Like I, I can be great at STEM if I just work hard. And so that tanked my GPA. And then I realized like, oh, I can't. I can't do this anymore. Like I just have to accept that I'm like that I love political science and even though it's not something that I feel like gets as much attention at Penn, it's like it's still an important field of work. Right now, do you feel much better? Yes. My coursework is not necessarily easier. It's a better fit for me. I'm playing more to my strengths. I always liked math and science and I was always good at math and science and I'm a black woman, so I think I was kind of pushed into engineering. I, and I didn't really think of psychology as a science, but the way it is here, it is very much treated as like a science. I feel better in my classes, I enjoy my coursework more, and things have resolved themselves a bit at home, so. Um, <laughs> not really. I feel like they could have done a lot better. I wouldn't say so. <laughs> <laughs> to be totally honest, I wouldn't say Penn has the best um, support system. Honestly, no. Honestly, no, I don't. I, I, bro, I think CAP sucks. Should I be on the record saying that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like Penn hasn't done maybe such a great job in especially helping Figley students. Mm -hmm. Like I'm a Questbridge student and it's like a scholarship for Figley students. Mm -hmm. And there's supposed to be this like really like tight knit community with like all of these resources that are just like laid out on a table for you, yeah. which is how they like set it up when I got accepted to Penn. Mm -hmm. But then I came to Penn and I met with the Questbridge kids like one time and I never, spoke to them again. The amount of times I hear like people trying to reach out to CAPS and um, talking with you know any sort of personal counselor, it's really been difficult and I feel like they could have done a lot better. Oh yeah, like even though there's like free mental health counseling sessions, they're booked like months in advance, like you don't have like a chance of getting a spot. Like hearing this sort of thing so often, like every time a semester starts is really discouraging. I think that mental health at Penn is really no worse than mental health is like in the country. I don't think that it is prioritized in a way that actually maximizes 
the benefits that these services can give you. Like, I don't have like private health insurance mm -hmm. because I'm poor, so I have to use Penn's health insurance. Mm -hmm. And I don't know all of the specifics mm -hmm. about it. Even if I sit down and like go through like the fine print of like this document, I'm not gonna understand most of it. Mm -hmm. Especially like growing up very poor and being kind of taught that like you shouldn't trust health institutions like hospitals because Even though they'll save your life, you'll be in debt to them for the rest of your life mm. Even though I know Penn advertises like oh, this is like a free service mm -hmm. that we give It's I'm always scared that there's going to be like this like Obscure chart that is going to necessarily become like a really big burden to my family Like caps, you're only supposed to see a therapist for six months max What are you gonna do in six months? If, if you have like real problems like it's not gonna be resolved in six months If you're like having a fight with your boyfriend, maybe that's gonna be resolved in six months, but Yeah, it's not as serious or in-depth as I think it should be so basically I have a heart condition. There was this one day that I like the symptoms like just came back like immediately. I was really scared and I, I explained the situation to them very briefly. Mm. And they were like, well, who is your primary care provider? I was like, I don't know. Like I haven't seen a doctor in like yeah. forever. Yeah. And they were like, well, we can't do anything. So Ooh. I was like, oh, okay. So if I die, then, you know, I will drown in my own blood. So then like, I'm always kind of wondering like, even if I did like go to seek out like counseling or maybe like a psych evaluation mm -hmm. that if I don't have specific knowledge mm -hmm. then they won't be able to help me and I feel like Penn wasn't really understanding of the COVID situation compared to other colleges well the late day policies for one office hour av availability was not like that good and because of time differences it kind of gets confusing like when something is due or not and I feel they were a bit um, more strict than necessary. From Professor, I think they do as best as they can. I think I have generally have sentenced that sometimes like, Professor really do care about my mental health, and they try to make all the accommodations they can within the constraint of their work, obviously. Like, their hands are tied sometimes, you know, to publish grades. I guess be more selfish. It's really easy for me, like as a chronic sort of people pleaser, to just let people kind of dictate how I live my life. And so really trying to make sure that I'm not doing things that I don't want to do has been really important, regardless of if it makes people think of me as less of a good person for whatever reason. I know that my intentions are good. Sometimes you need to just sit and kind of reflect on where you actually are and where you're like behind or actually just you're making it up in your head. I do feel like it's helpful to surround yourself with the right people, people that are actually willing to listen to you, knows that you're vulnerable and it's okay for you to be vulnerable around. Uh, thankfully, I have a great friend group support system. I can say whatever I want to them. They really care about my, my well-being, so that, that's really helped out a lot. Yeah. One thing for me that really, really helped is that I started allowing myself to be alone, basically constantly. You might have heard, I've told you, like, I don't have friends. I don't go out. <laughs> like, I had to s scrap together one friend to go to Spring Fling with me. That was a stress that I didn't get anything from, kind of like engineering. It was just like a lot of stress and I didn't feel like it was really for my sake or that it was leading me anywhere positive. And so I think one thing that helped me is just fully acknowledging and validating what I want and need for myself instead of just like doing things that other people do or that I've been told is good especially being a psychology major everyone tells me people need people like evolutionary psychology we, we're meant to be social and I'm just like look leave me alone I'm gonna go some play some video games like let me live my life I hope that people coming to Penn freshmen will do their best to make their own lives happy rather than other people. I was kind of thinking it would be helpful to 
maybe put out like a monthly survey or something of like mental health which should be short so that like people don't feel burdened by it to just have like links and like resources laid out um, for people who need them. You know, not everybody here has to go into investment banking, has to be a consultant, has to make seven figures, you know. But that is what they sell and that's what they do a really good job at. And the people that do make out really become successful. But I think they need to make sure that students who don't follow these conventional career paths feel okay. Like it's okay to be to deviate from the norm, and it should still be celebrated. It's just, it shouldn't just be okay. It's just like everybody ha can should pursue their own path. Something that might fix the problem that I like specifically have that a lot of other people probably have would be maybe to provide like step by step like what this process would look like if it's something that you need. Mm -hmm. Like I know they kind of have like a breakdown of how you would go about getting like a psychological evaluation and then like medication like stuff like this but the in-between parts are very blurry like there's no information about like what you need to know going in like about like your insurance or about like your medical history if there's certain risks associated with maybe like the country that you're from that could affect like xyz factor i feel like something they could do is connect people to therapists in the area because Penn requires that you have health insurance and like the Penn health insurance covers mental health services. So instead of having the only mental health services available be on campus and only for a semester at a time, if they could like try to connect people with more long-term therapists, especially if they think they need it. Maybe it is mandatory for lecturers to inform the students of where to find support uh, resources and all that. I do remember every professor going through them in the first day of class, but Penn is a very toxic environment. Yeah, so I don't think students really think of it as an as a valid option because we know that if we take time off just to like take care of our, our mental health, we're gonna fall behind. And we're gonna have a really bad grade, and we don't want that. Yeah. Again, I'm saying this as a computer science student. We have a lot of homeworks, and each assignment takes quite a lot of time. Plus, I don't think that kind of workload is really necessary. <laughs> Sometimes I, when I do my homework, I just do it for the sake of the homework, not for learning. Yeah, that's not helping with our mental stability. <laughs> Again, it's like when I was in engineering, it's like if you have the opportunity to do your work or like ruminate about all of the negative emotions you have and how awful you feel, you're just gonna work. And we're so busy that we don't take time to like look for other resources to distract us from the work that we need to get done. Something that I kind of struggled with was feeling like I have the time mm. to seek out these resources for myself mm. since they're not like kind of <laughs> pushed in my face, like for lack of better words. I, I think that like the pen websites aren't super like well designed like maybe they're designed for a more mentally well person <laughs> so then when i go on a website and i can't find like immediately like something that i'm looking for it's really like discouraging right. and then i have like so many deadlines and assignments and i feel like i don't have time to spend on this like i'll do it later when i have more time and there's never more time i feel like mental health should be a bit more mandatory maybe that would help if we have to put it in our schedules ourselves, guess what? We're gonna work first. We have deadlines, but if it's put into our schedules and we can't avoid it, 